As soon as I walked onto the stage, you had an image of me. I'm a girl. I'm young. I probably don't have that much life experience. And you're right. How many of you have ever felt like you've been put into a box before? Yeah, OK, so that's what stereotypes are. And we'll get to that later. But for now, you're right. I am young. I am a sophomore in college, toddling between being an adult, grown up, wanting to do things my own way, and bringing my, home, home, <laughs> bringing my laundry home on the weekends so that my parents can do it for me, because I know that they will help me out. And I'm very grateful to have the parents that I do have, because as a child, they really let me explore my interests. Growing up, I was so passionate about animals. I wanted to meet them. I wanted to interact with them. I wanted to see what made each species different from the next. And my parents really let me explore these interests, and they encouraged me to do so. As many of you may know, my mom is a science teacher. Since I was about six years old, she's been bringing me to National Science Teacher Association conferences, where I was able to meet many different animal species and grow as a young scientist. In 2013, I had the opportunity to begin presenting at these conferences. That year, the National Science Teacher Association Conference was held in Boston, and as a presenter, you get little perks around the cities that you're in. So one of our perks was to go and see a free pre-screening of an IMAX film called Island of Lemurs, Madagascar. And I was like, wow, this is about lemurs, animals. I love animals. I want to go see this. So I dragged my mom out to it, and we sat through it. The film was amazing. Great visuals, pictures and footages of lemurs jumping through the trees, amazing landscapes. And it was, mentioned, it was talked through by Morgan Freeman, who is an incredible speaker, turns your ears to gold. So afterwards, we were told that we were able to meet the director, the producer, and the woman whose research the film was based off of right there in the theater. And I was so amazed and impressed by the film that I really wanted to go down and meet them. So I did. And I went down and I talked to Dr. Patricia Wright for over half an hour, and we really connected. And afterwards, she offered me a position to come over and help her with her research on lemurs in Madagascar as a senior in high school. And I was like, this is really cool. Researching lemurs in Madagascar? Who wouldn't want to do that, right? Um, but in reality, I was kind of more like, this is me in high school, and this is how I perceived a lemur researcher to be. There's not much overlap. But nonetheless, I kept in touch with Dr. Wright, and I carried on to college. So I was like, yikes. Sorry, back one. So I carried on to college. Um, in college, I really wanted to get a position working at Hamilton over the summer so I could do more research and get my hands into science. So I applied to a few positions, and I got waitlisted for one. So I needed a backup plan. At this late in the game, there weren't too many positions opened. So I found a spot at the Duke Lemur Center in North Carolina, and I applied for that. And I applied for internship funding to help me fund it through Hamilton College. A little while later, I found out that I didn't get the research at Hamilton. I was waitlisted for the research at the Duke Lemur Center, and then the very next day, I found out I got internship funding. And at this point, I was like, yikes. <laughs> Yikes! Um, I looked like Dylan O'Brien, minus the glasses. I had failed twice now, and I really wasn't sure what to do next because I had internship funding. But luckily, I got saved by the next point that I want to make. Take every opportunity that you have. If I had never been at the National Science Teacher Association Conference, I would have never been in Boston. And if I was never in Boston, I would have never been to the IMAX film. And if I had never gone to that, I would have never met Dr. Wright. And if I had never met Dr. Wright, it would have been a lot harder for me to go over to Madagascar and do research with her this past summer. So I'm hoping that all of you in the audience have been able to play with dominoes at least once in your life. If not, it's not a hard concept. You line up your blocks of wood, and you push one down and watch as they fall, cascading downwards. To me, life is like a series of dominoes. Every action and every opportunity that you have is another domino in your series of life. Many times, one action that you take allows the next domino to fall and allows you to have more opportunities. Sometimes, however, your dominoes might be placed too far apart and the cascade stops. This is when perseverance is essential. If you truly desire something, you need to be able to figure out how you can carry on and get the next domino to fall. 
Sometimes it might require someone else to help you come and push it along the way. So at this point, I had the funding, and with it, I reached out and reconnected with Dr. Wright. And I asked her if I could join her research team for that summer in Madagascar. And she was thrilled to have me on the team and offered me a position to come over and research with her. Now, this is when my dominoes started falling perhaps a little bit too quickly. Uh, within a month, I had to get all of my vaccinations. I had to read several different scientific literature pieces so that I knew what I would be researching. I needed to get a visa to go to Madagascar and all of my field equipment for nine weeks, in addition to studying and completing my final exams. But eventually, I was on the plane over to Madagascar. If you don't know too much about Madagascar, it is the fourth largest island in the world located off the eastern coast of Africa. It is also a hub of biodiversity. Over, in the past decade, over 600 species of plants and animals have been discovered on the island alone. So as you might imagine, flying over Madagascar, I thought that I would see luscious green forests below me out the window of the plane, but I was wrong. I actually saw mud and dirt and red and brown clay. And it really shocked me. That's because 90% of the forests in Madagascar have been deforested in the past few decades due to agriculture, ag agricultural needs and resources. Um, this, the place that I was able to research is actually a sanctuary. It's called Ranamafana National Park. And in that park, there are about 13 species of lemur that have been identified, and along with several other species of plants and animals. So in Madagascar, I was working to research the Milton Edward Shafaka lemur, as you can see in the picture on the left. Um, we continued out a 25-year behavioral study that Dr. Wright started. Um, and every morning, we would go across the bridge into Ranmafana National Park. You can see how big and how luscious the trees were. It wasn't just me, though. I was working with Dr. Wright's team of researchers. There were six local people who have been doing this research for most of their lives. And that's me in the middle. So every morning, we would wake up around 6.30 in the morning, go eat breakfast. I would meet up with them with all of our gear. We would go out, cross the bridge into the forest, find the lemurs that we were looking for for that day, and we would hang out with them and see what they were doing. I was so fortunate because I was able to actually start my own research in Madagascar, researching the bacteria inside of the guts of the lemur. Now, to some of you in the audience, that might sound a little gross, right? The guts inside of... The bacteria inside the guts of a lemur? Ew. But for me, it was really fascinating, and I was very fortunate to have this opportunity. As I have been able to have these experiences, my dominoes keep falling. For me, next summer, I will actually be researching nanotechnology in Taiwan, and I'm very fortunate to have this experience. But all of this came because I asked for it. I asked for these opportunities, and without that, I would never be able to be where I am now. So let's go back to this Venn diagram. Here's what I thought I could do in high school, and here's what a lemur researcher was perceived by me to do in high school. I had this stereotype in my head that a lemur researcher was very different from myself. They, they're out of this world, crazy, insane people to be off in the rainforest hunting down lemurs every day and finding them to see what they were doing. So I didn't really think that I would be able to do that. But I was able to change my perception of myself and come out of my comfort zone to see that really I could do whatever I want in life. And I just want you to leave with this point that reality is what you make of it. Thank you.